Good morning, judges. This is Team Tess, consisting of Enyang, Zhiyi, and Titus, presenting for Robo Cup Rescue Line 2020. We will be sharing with you our team roles and achievements, our hardware design process, our software design process, footage of our robot completing the challenge tasks, and what our team has learned from our preparations. I am G, head of logistics, head of media, and head of publicity, running our social media account, filming, editing all footage for this, as well as editing with programming and building design. I am Ern Yang, head of programming and aided in building and design. I created the software for the robot and helped to design and build the robot. I am Titus, head of building and design, and I have won in the VEX competition 2017, and I have almost eight years of robotics experience. For our preparation process, we decided to use the same robot and program we used for RoboCup Singapore and modify them using the lessons we learned from RoboCup Singapore. We focus on creating the playview first before modifying the program and the robot. We then tested the robot, began working on our presentation, then filmed the necessary videos. I will now talk about the hardware design process. Firstly, we started planning on our design. We decided to use the EV3 hardware as it was easy to build with and easy to modify. We started to plan what components we needed, which were two motors for steering, and movement, ball bearing, a ball collection tool, two light sensors for uh, line tracing, a ball collection area, and an EV3 brake. The first level will include the ball bearing and the two motors for steering and movement. The second level will include the ball collection tool, uh, two light sensors for line tracing, and the ball collection area. And the third level includes the EV3 brake. We started by building the base of the robot to build a foundation to support the brain. But not long after, we rebuilt the base as it was too wide and had to be taller. After having a stable base, we started designing the mechanism to retrieve the light balls and after some trial and error, we got the, our claw mechanism that would lift up and sweep the balls into the ball collection area which would be at the bottom of the robot. After building the claw, we built the storage area out of frames. We placed the sensor for identifying the balls onto the claw which makes it easier and more convenient to identify the balls and be able to uh, capture the balls easier. We managed to place the light sensors right behind the, story, the ball storage area, which was close to the wheels, allowing the robot to line trace more accurately. Attaching the brain was the easiest. All we had to do was to connect the brain to level 2 and it was stable, although it was quite tall. The overall design of the robot tilted backwards, which allowed the light sensors in front of the robot to line trace correctly and to allow the robot to go over the speed bumps, which it could not do in the qualifiers. After the testing, we decided to widen the storage area to allow the robot to store two balls and the rescue kit. The robot was finished. I will now talk about the software design process. We decided to use the EV3 program to design the software, as it is easy to use and I'm the most familiar with this language for programming EV3 robots. I split the program into three different parts for the first play field. The line tracing program before the robot enters the evacuation zone, the evacuation zone program, the line tracing program after the robot enters the evacuation zone to organize my workflow. The first part of the program was also used for the second play field. From RoboCup Singapore, we learned that the robot had to travel slower so it could properly navigate the tight turns and gaps in those black lines. In the evacuation zone, the robot had to travel slowly so it would not accidentally hit the ball out of the way. So this is the line tracing program for Playfield 2. The first part to the left is used for the robot to trace the black lines properly and to turn correctly the spots with the green spots. Following the second part, the second part to the right is used to allow the robot to move around the obstacles using the light sensor or the door to sense the obstacle. There are no special modifications needed to be made for the robot to go over the speed bumps and the door, and the door will close with the program stopping when the robot senses red. The line tracing program used for people in evacuation zone in Playfield 1 is similar to the program with the line tracing program used for Playfield 2, except that the robot would stop when it senses silver, not red, and the second part of the program was removed and there was no obstacles. For the evacuation zone program, I wanted the robot to sweep the entire zone before reaching the evacuation point to save time. I used the boundary of the zone to indicate when the robot would turn. I also designed to not collect the dead ball as it was lengthened around for not too many points turned. The claw will lift up once the light sensor of the claw says white to collect the living victims. 
robot will lift out a claw, deposit the lifting victims in the evacuation point when the line tracing sensor sends the evacuation point. For evacuation program, if the evacuation point is in the bottom left, the robot will move forward a certain distance before turning right and then left. The robot will turn five more times before moving forward to the evacuation, zone, evacuation point. After depositing the boss in the evacuation point, the robot will move forward, move backwards, turn around, and then move forward out of the evacuation zone. So this is the evacuation zone program. program. The first part allows the robot to collect the balls, while the second part allows the robot to move around the evacuation zone, separated into different portions. At the end of each portion, the robot will run the first part to collect the balls. And this, this is the path the robot will take if the evacuation point was in the top right. The robot will move forward a certain distance before turning right and then left. The robot will turn five more times before turning around and moving forward until the light sensor sends the boundary of the zone, where it will turn right and move forward to the evacuation point. After depositing the boss in the evacuation zone, the robot will move backward, turn around and move forward until it's adjacent to the green line, turn right and exit the zone. This program is similar to the other evacuation zone program. The line tracing program after entering the evacuation zone is the same as the program for the line tracing seeing used for Playfield 2, except the second part of the program is smooth as there are no obstacles. Now we will show you our test runs. This is our robot performing different chain tasks, like the double PID, ball pickup, obstacle avoidance, and wet weather testing. Finally, this is a video of our test run. We will now be talking about what our team has learned from preparing the competition. Our team members have close to nothing in common. We are not even the best of friends. We have always participated in different teams in competitions, and our style of building and programming are very different. For me, initially, I could not catch on to the building styles of my teammates as it was not what I was used to see. However, as time passed, I learned how just how to incorporate my own building style along with theirs, which made everything fit in like a piece of the puzzle. For me, getting along with each other was a tough one as we would burst into arguments and disagree with each other due to the building and design of the robot. From this, I also learned how to be more tolerant and patient and be more accepting. For me, it was tough for me to understand what my teammates were doing and how I could get my usual style of programming to work with the robot structure. From this, I've learned to step out of my comfort zone and improve my problem solving and conversational skills. This experience of working with each other was a fruitful journey and not like any other. Making our robot also brought us unforgettable memories. Our team will strive our best and strive for the sky. Thank you for listening. All footage in this presentation, it was filmed according to safe management measures at the time of filming.